Welcome back to another episode of Nerds and Rounds, guys. It's your host, Sebastian. It's your boy, Law. And your boy, Tone, from across the hall. And tonight, we have a creative series episode where we're happy to feature Enrique Lopez. Enrique, how are you, brother? Good evening, guys. How y'all doing today? We are good. good. Hanging hey, in there. Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. For those that don't know, Enrique is an awesome inker, but he is also an artist, writer, and just, I'm going to be real, overall swell guy. I- well, I started, you know, uh, though my useful features may fool you, um, <laughs> the, I, am, I am 55, and I started doing this way back in the 70s, and inspired by Gil Kane and John Buscema, um, all these great artists from Conan and stuff that I wanted to draw that way, and also write, because I was inspired by H.G. Uh, Wells, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Stephen King. So I was trying to combine both things. Um, of course, when the time came for me to choose a career in college, my parents said there's no way I was going to do drawing. There was no way, you know, being son of Cubans, they're like, no, 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 mijito, no. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they gave you the, the talk. You, you, need, you need to make money. You need to make money. <laughs> so I was like, be a businessman. So I went to, so I actually went to college as an, as an accountant and I snuck into classes like for video production and all that kind of stuff. Once I decided that accounting was not where I really wanted to be, it was supposed to be in marketing. So I thought, you know what? I can do marketing and there is advertising. And in advertising, you actually have to do some art. So I go, let me go that way. And so I, unbeknownst to my parents, I took all these video courses and stage crew and uh, I acted in plays and took a script writing, public speaking, all because I knew that I wanted to get into advertising and do art in one day. So I did that. And I kept producing stories and stuff all the time. And I did a pitch to Marvel and DC before they even did any of the amalgams. I did the, uh, the stories of uh, a Punisher and, a, and Batman. We, I'm a friend of I'm one of the artists of my, one of my agencies. We actually drew it together. We sent it in now. Um, I kept at it until 93 when I did a meeting in New York. I met with the people at Dark Horse who pitched them. Uh, my story of a space uh, space saga that I had. No. Now, you got to understand, people were saying, like, why don't you just do it yourself? Back then, we didn't have Kickstarter, Indiegogo. We didn't have all this independent stuff. There was no image. There was none of that stuff. There was just either Marvel or DC, maybe some continuity, maybe some first comics over there, Eclipse over here once in a while, but that's about it. So, really, if you if I didn't feel I could make it even through Dark Horse, I said, it's done. You know, I can't go. So I just, just decided to focus on my artwork in, inside the, uh, the advertising field. But eventually I just got out of that and became more on an executive side. So I had to create a director and working with the, the accounts. And then from then, I put it on the back burner until like three years, four years ago that my youngest daughter decided that she liked to draw and she wanted to explore drawing more. Uh, she had been, we had taken her to New York and moved. She learned how to sew. And, by, but the thing is that when she was doing all this cosplay work, she actually had to sketch the drawing out of the costume. So she actually started to enjoy doing that even more. And to nurture that, I said, well, look, I'm going to start taking you to show. So I took her to her first Comic-Con and she was blown away. She said, oh, I got to start doing this more often. <laughs> and... And I said, that bug, that's, man. that's how it goes, the bug. <laughs> and and, and, I, and then, I, then the Cuban part of me came out and said, pero me hate that. <laughs> it's not going to make you any money. So let me show you how it is. So let's start going to cons. And I said, I'll go with you because you can't do them alone. And uh, she was 15 and said, just explore and see how it goes. And I'll just hang out with you at the table. But it ended up being that I started bumping into Larry Stroman, Keith Williams, Billy Tucci, Mark McKenna. Um, who else did I bump into? Uh, Jay Lipson. They were saying, why aren't you on the table here? I'm like, you know, I haven't done this for years, man. You know, you know, like you guys have been going around this for years, doing it forever. I haven't, I haven't done it. You know, like, well, you should be here. And that's when I started getting back into it. And little by little, Paul Abrams gave me a lot of little sketches for me to work. And from then on, it's just been like for the last two, three years, it's just been trying to bumping heads try to get opportunities here and there. And now I'm, this is where I am. I have two published works in one year. I got another one coming out next year and maybe like three or four more. So 
So a little dedication worked out. You know, I, it, like I told my mom after all these years, so you say, you know, you never wanted me to do this. It took me 35 years when I'm finally published. So, so it's never it, too late. Okay. Yeah, I know. Now, my, now my dad is like the ultimate fan, man. He's like, <laughs> once I tell him, like before he was like, no, no, I like, now I tell now every time he see him on the show and doing a show, he's like, he sits down and watches it, you know. Let's so. get into those published works you talked about, which is horrendous and stupendous. All right. That just recently came out. Stupendous came out this year as well. How was it? How did it feel to get to work on those books? Plus, also too, I was looking at the credits. You come in as an inker, but you came in also too as an illustrator on this. How did also did it feel to have Keith Williams actually ink your work? Keith and I have developed this really nice relationship, a friendship, um, because when I started Instagram. And I was like struggling. I was not getting anybody to follow me and stuff. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Beyond the point that I wasn't doing the, the tags correctly and stuff. Keith was actually one of the first professionals to follow me. And I was like, why? <laughs> it's like, and I remember I went up to him in New York and I said, dude, you know, I, thank you for following me. Why are you following me? And, and I'll never forget those words he told me. He says, I always like to follow those who have potential. And, and that for me gave me a lot of impetus to keep working at it. When you do your character creation, is the story what dictates the character or do you have the character first and then like have the story like follow afterwards? No, the story is for me, it's always first. The, once in a while, I will have a character up, you know, first. Like when I created my space saga for Dark Horse, I knew the character. I designed the character first, and then I said, where does he live? And that's where I went into creating the universe for him. Um, but most of the times I do now, the story brings in the character to me. They, the story, the whole evolution of what, the, what we're trying to say will help me produce the characters. Like Kid Massive was never a character I decided to, oh, let me sit down and create this guy. And then, no, it was like, after I did it, I said, the voice is here, but who is it? What does the person look like who's saying these things? And that's when I created it. So I remember I was at the, the show with, I think it was in New Jersey with Sebastian when, we, when he first met you and just kind of just seeing you just doing your, your artwork. And um, what's the thought process like? So like you're looking at a piece that's, that's already penciled and you're looking at a figure and you're trying to put the detail in. Is it more so like you have specific limbs that you work off? Do you have a map? Is the sun shining in your mind where the light source is coming from? Like, how does, how does that work? Cause that just seems like a whole different aspect of art. I haven't really, you know, heard too much about just from people that I know. And I'd love to hear your take on that. Well, thank you for that question. Okay. So what is the thought process? Okay. Basically I'm a tracer. <laughs> no, you know, that's going back to I always I always bring that up uh, because some people just think, well, you're just following the lines. Sometimes I do. If the artist has really put in a really tight, really detailed piece, and they kind of have an idea of what they're thinking, like when you have a a, a still, basically a, a a simple sketch with no story around it. Usually they don't have the, they are, they're not thinking about light sources and stuff like that most of the time. So when I do those, then I can pretty much decide what I want to do with them. A case in point, like when Sebastian sent me his drawing for the inking with Kika show, he kept it pretty, pretty loose. So I had pretty much whatever I wanted to do with it, you know, and I, I followed his idea and kept it, but I also gave it my look. Um, an example would be like when Sarah Madura sent me her, her, um, uh, her character, or Morrigan, from the Dark Starkers video game, I just started looking at her character, and I said, okay, I feel it this way with brush. I feel it's going to have this kind of look. I've, I'm looking at the reference picture. I'm going like this flow, and I started using brush, 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 and stuff. At the end, she was like, oh, my God, that looks like the Yamato's work. And it was like, that's the actual designer of the Final Fantasy books, uh, games. And he was an influence of mine from years ago. I did not realize I was channeling him for that moment. Um, sometimes I will do that. Sometimes I will sit down and say, let me think like this character, like, like an Ernie Chan or maybe like uh, Rudy Nevers, uh, like maybe a Keith Williams and stuff. How did, would they approach this? Um, I usually look at the things that I know are going to give me trouble. Like, for example, if I see a character with a lot of flowing air, I go like, all right, that's last. I'm doing that last. Um, or somebody has a really... 
a face with not a lot of details, that's last. Because I need to feel everything first, and then I go, now I got to decide how I'm going to complete it at the end. So what I end up doing is I'm trying to decide to try to keep the artist's vision as close to it as possible, but by giving my own, my own look at time. Nowadays, colors are kind of take, trying to take us out of the way, and I got a piss of that. Um, I, and I can tell when, when I look at certain work, I'm going like, and I'm talking works that are out there on Kickstarter, on Marvel. They just bypass the inker. They were like, no, we're going straight to coloring from pencils. And you know, in and those pieces don't have weight. They just look like very, very soft because it doesn't have that weight of the line. It doesn't have that, ex that extra movement that an inker and those shades can bring in. Yes, the pencil are put the darkness in certain areas, but it's just not the same when it has the black in there and you can feel it. Um, a lot of colors that try to put in dollar different colors in there to give it that weight. Sometimes it can work if you're really, really good colorist. But I think there's a like the speed again, or there's just a, a lack of respect for the art of inking as well. It depends on the editor. It depends on who's running the show. Now, Not So Fair Tales is the brainchild of John Englefield. He's an artist. You can find him on both of my books. He's also part of the stories here. And he came, he approached me because he liked what I did on both of these books. And he says, you know, I got this anthology coming out next year in Kickstarter. Why don't you pitch me a story? I said, okay, what are they about? These are fairy tales. Of, these are publicly owned characters. You're going to do your own spin on them. I have three stories in there. I'm writing all three. I'm inking two of them, at least. The third one, I'm probably going to ink it as well. Okay, the first team has got John Mahler is, is working with me. Uh, he's the, like I said, the creator of Horrendous and Stupendous. He is going to be illustrating and coloring, no, illustrating and lettering uh, a story which we're basing off John, uh, Jack the Giant Killer. And that's basically the Jack the Beanstalk kind of stuff like that, uh, but a more mythical, med medieval kind of story. Uh, I have him, he's doing that, I'm writing and inking, and Sigmund Torre will be coloring it. Oh. All right, so boom, we got him there. So then for my second story, I'm doing it with Matt Budich, uh, independent artist. He's done Daddy's Beard on Kickstarter. He'll be illustrating and coloring and lettering, and I'll be inking and writing it. Uh, and there'll be a section of the story, which when we discussed it, I said, originally I wanted you to do the whole thing, but I'm going to draw the last three pages. He's like, perfect. So I'm drawing on that one and inking on that one. Oh, okay, that story actually is, has the big bad wolf in it. Then the third story is of a character that nobody knows. It's called Iron John. And that's my big story. That is the one that was been in my brain for the longest time. Um, and it, it's really influenced by a lot of the stuff we're seeing now uh, been, for the past few months, and not with COVID, but with the other things. Social justice and being an immigrant, being Hispanic, you know, all these things, all these feelings are coming back up. I lived in the South for many years. So I'm like, this story just came to me. So I thought Iron John is the perfect, nobody knows this character, perfect vehicle to get the story out there. And because I found it to be so important, I asked Paris Collins to do it with me. He agreed. And I'm going to have Carlos Mangual, fellow Puerto Rican, he was going to letter it for me. Art show Inking with Kike on Mondays at 8 Eastern Standard Time on Instagram. It's a nice show. It's only, I'm trying to ex expand it next year, maybe to StreamYard. We'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely go talk expansion. I got you. Again, check out Kike's stuff. Check out the art. Check out the inking. Pick up the check books. Up, pick them up. up. Give him the likes. Also, to make sure you pick up the books from Historian V, anywhere where you can buy Stupendous, Horrendous. There's great stories, um, great anthology. Mm -hmm.